know me, which is probably most of you. My name's Weasel. I'm a member of uh, the Nomad Mobile Research Center. Uh, it's an international group of uh, hackers that's been around for, oh, seven, eight years, something yeah, like that. Well. Yeah, and um, we've just, you know, had thousands of projects that we all worked on, and uh, probably maybe 1% of them have actually been finished and made it to fruition. Uh, hopefully we've got a few here that we can, uh, what a picture. Well, hopefully we've got a few here that uh, might, uh, might impress a few people, if anything, maybe inspire them to take them and do something useful with them instead of them just sitting on our file server. Um, okay, uh, I don't know. Am I supposed to read these things? No, okay. All right. Uh, these are a few quotes. Feel free to read. Um, let me go ahead and introduce a few of the members. Uh, most of you know uh, Simple Nomad. Uh, he started the group. Uh, he's, I think he's known for his goat porn, so... Um, he's the, yeah, and Pandora. So if anybody has any support questions with Pandora, that's the gnome at nmrc.org. So <laughs> anyway, uh, next to him is Jay Random. He's uh, another long-term member, and um, he probably his claim for fame is I won't I won't embarrass you. Uh, is uh, he was the maintainer of the hack fact for many years, and if we actually have time. Uh, at the end of our presentation, he'll go over uh, kind of what's happened with that and why it's not as up-to-date as it probably should be or if it even should be up-to-date. And then uh, over there is Mad Hat. If there are any single ladies in the audience, he will buy you a car. So, um, you know, speak to him afterwards. Um, he's, uh, the, I'll let you introduce your per personal life. And I'll, it's Mad Hat. And um, he's recently joined the group, and uh, he's uh, coming up with some really exciting projects. And that's who we are. <laughs> okay, we'll go on to the where's section and uh, see what tools we've been going over here. Um, and this is yours. Okay. Uh, first off, a uh, tool that I had uh, worked on previously called Encrypt. Uh, and I've talked about it previously at other conferences, so I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail on it. It's a, uh, a symmetrical uh, uh, crypto tool. Uh, the one thing, that, and it also had some, like, you know, file wiping features that came with it, and it was kind of nice, did AES uh, uh, and uh, Serpent and uh, Two Fish. Uh, included in that, uh, Todd McDermott, who's contri contributed code, <clears throat> he's contributed code to the project. I don't know if Todd is here. Is Todd McDermott in the audience anywhere? I was going to have him stand up. Anyway, he's contributed a lot of code to the project, uh, uh, and it's out on SourceForge if you're looking for it. But anyway, I'm hoping to get up. Uh, Todd wrote a drop-in uh, replacement for RM called NRM, which does basically secure wiping of a, of a file where it does multi-passes, and uh, it forks off into the background and, and kind of runs and does all the passes so you get your prompt back. And that's the main thing that we've added into that. The other thing is, believe it or not, we put in... Uh, we had a lot of people asking for integration for the Encrypt uh, tool into scripts where they actually, and this was requested, say we want to be able to pass the password on the command line or from a text file, which is horrid. However, they're wanting to do it for encrypting log files before transmitting them from one machine to the other. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I don't do the, use that feature, but I had enough people do it. I put it in there, and it's in the man pages. It says it's highly dangerous. But nonetheless, it's in there in case you want to assume that uh, the box that was uh, broken into, make sure that those uh, log files that, uh, you know, they get across there in a secure fashion. Anyway, uh, next, uh, Mad Hat. Why don't you go and talk about that? All right, so I can use three different tools uh, I wrote a while back. Um, designed for short people. It's not my fault. All right. Can everybody hear me now? I'll take that as a yes. All right. So these are actually three different tools. Um, I, I had a project where I had to scan a large number of IPs on a daily basis and figure out what exactly was changing, what was going on. Uh, love Nmap and all the work that uh, Fyodor has done on that. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't quite fast enough for what I needed, so I wrote the Nmap wrapper. And what that does is it runs a bunch of Nmap processes in parallel stores all of it to flat files right now using the replicable output. The other two tools work off of those databases. InMap Report basically allows you to go in 
and specify what you want to see. So show me all the hosts that are Windows. Show me all the hosts that are going to have port 80 open. In map diff allows you to specify two specific dates and give you the diff on all the hosts or any particular hosts. The whole idea is being able to monitor large networks for changes. Uh, by default, it only shows you new things that are added, but you can also show whenever things go away, you know, a whole new host that comes up. Right? It just makes it a whole lot easier than, you know, trying to look at something that you only see a snapshot once every week or something of that nature. This is a, shows you daily changes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so I was, <laughs> for this particular project, I was scanning around 150,000 IPs a day, and it, I had it down to around 10 hours to scan all 150,000 IPs, so I could have done it twice a day if necessary. From a single box, free BSD box, um, sitting in a DMZ, scanning hosts worldwide. This was not like a single location. This was boxes all around the world, so I had to deal with network latencies, you know, and well, the speed of light, things such as that. So it came in extremely handy. Ready for spot? Sure. All right, so for those of you who are at Black Hat, uh, we went over this with Black Hat. The idea is uh, single packet authentication. This was really a uh, project just to see if it could be done. Um, I run the local DC group in Dallas, which is DC214, and we started discussing uh, year and a half or so ago, you know, after Fort Knocking came out, is there a better way of doing this? You know, do we really need to send multiple packets? Can we do it with a single packet and make it not replayable and make it, you know, secure and actually do more than just open a port? You know, can we run commands? Can we do things like, say, reverse shell? Do we have to have any ports actually listening? You know, so this is what we came up with. Um, it's a simple protocol, allows a remote user to authenticate the system. There's nothing listening. It sniffs all the packets that are coming in. Uh, we use uh, PGP or GPG to encrypt the data. And whenever you do that, if you just use raw encryption, uh, what is it, eight bytes in? Eight bytes in, eight bytes in the, the, there are four bytes that are the GPG ID of the key that can decrypt it. So basically we look for that, we see that, we pass it on to the processing engine. Um, of course it's free, why not? Um, well. And of course, one of the issues we wanted to deal with was working across NAT because we always hated, you know, having somebody call us up, hey, I need to be able to check my mail on such and such host. Okay, what IP are you on? Uh, I'm on 192, 168, no, 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 no. What IP are you gonna be coming from? Well, it says 192, oh, Jesus. So they can send, you know, with the client, they can send a single packet and it looks at the source address and says, oh, okay, so we'll open it up for that IP. And then of course it monitors the traffic and after a certain timeout, it'll automatically close the port. We're also, uh, you know, working with the idea of doing a reverse shell, so you send a single packet and it connects back to you. Um, and then we can also have it to where, uh, in our sample code, where you can run arbitrary commands. And the commands are specified in the config file, so it's not like anybody who has access to it can run any command. You have a comma-separated list of the commands that are allowed to be run by that particular user. Uh, this is a visual representation of basically how it works. So over on the left-hand side, you have the client with, you know, its GPG ID. Uh, it encrypts all the data, uh, which includes, you know, an ID, uh, session keys, timestamp, and then the command and control data for the application that's using the small protocol. Uh, it's encrypted and signed, you know, encrypted for security and signed for authenticity. Uh, and then it can be, you know, it's, it's a data packet. So, I mean, it can be TCP, UDP, ICMP, anything like that. We've implemented TCP and UDP in our sample code. Um, then, of course, you know, it encrypts it with the server's key. Server gets it, verifies that it's, you know, encrypted data, passes it on. Kind of an idea of how it's laid out. Um, I'm a Perl hacker, uh, so the parts that I worked on are in Perl. Uh, the client right now, you know, can be on whatever host, sends the data. SpaD is uh, basically a simple sniffer. Nomad's part written in C. Uh, once it verifies, you know, what it's looking for, sends it on to the SPA engine, which then calls GPG as necessary to decrypt, um, checks the user config to verify, you know, whatever they're asking to do can be done, and it also keeps track of firewall state. So if for some reason the daemon, you have to restart the daemon, and it, it's going to know what ports were already open and still keep track of them and close them as necessary. So. And a whole new one. All right. And we will have time for questions a little bit later. All right, so uh, 
at, at the job where I was mentioning where I wrote the in-map tool, uh, in-map tool, my primary responsibility was scanning and monitoring of large groups of hosts, uh, a whole lot of uh, uh, web servers and uh, Unix boxes. And at the time, whenever I first started on this particular project, there wasn't a lot out there to be able to scan all those same IPs on a daily basis, you know, for basic misconfigurations, vulnerabilities, things such as that. So I wrote, I started off writing a very simple HTTP scanner, and it kept growing and growing and growing. Um, works off command line, or it has a web-based GUI. You know, same script, just depends on how you call it. Uh, the configs are all in XML, so it's real easy to add and remove things or expand them. Uh, lots of command line options to specify exactly what you want to scan for, how you want to scan it. It runs a whole bunch of processes in parallel according to, you know, how, whatever your system can handle, so it's fairly quick. I added in, I started adding in some other features um, like FTP to look for anonymous access, look for writable directories, things such as that. Um, I, the SQL stuff was added because, you know, I happen to be working on parts of it whenever, you know, the whole SQL Slammer thing came around, so it was uh, easy to add in other features. Um, there was also some SMTP stuff, but, you know. Uh, it, is, it is extremely fast. That was the whole idea. Uh, you know, once again, I was scanning large number of hosts, um, needed to get it done, you know, in a short amount of time. Um, the way the output works, there are multiple outputs. You know, there's a verbose output that would actually tell you, hey, here's the vulnerability and here's the fix, and, you know, standard stuff for a scanner. Uh, but it also, uh, w another thing was, it was written so that I could export the data and import it into a database very easily. Uh, also worked a whole lot of time on false positives. For anybody who's done any, you know, constant monitoring of hosts, the big thing is, oh, look, there's a Apache vulnerability running on an IIS box. Yeah, that makes sense. So I, I spent a whole lot of time making sure that there were as few false positives as possible, looking for a whole bunch of different things, uh, you know, looking for custom 404s, you know, things that it's starting to become a little bit more common in, in scanners, but at the time, eh. uh, and of course, once again, it's free. Hey, I'm going to stand up here for a while. <laughs> All right, so here's another one. Uh, once again, in Perl. This one, um, the idea is ICMP packets are sent out with a forged source address. Um, the whole idea was on the corporate network, we wanted to check to see if people had DSL lines or modems, you know, something, or even misconfigured network devices so that things were being sent out the wrong direction. Um, I wrote a small Perl module that does allows for looping, so all of these actually use the same Perl module, so you can actually specify ranges of hosts in you know almost any format. Makes it really easy to run. So what this does is it forges an ICMP echo request. Uh, the data contains the IP that it was supposed to be sent to, as well as a uh, signed key, which is just using MD5 and a shared secret. The server sniffs uh, those on that forged address. Whenever it comes in, it looks to see if the source where it was being, where the uh, echo reply is coming from is the same that's within the data portion. Because the nice thing about ICMP is, whatever you send it in the data portion, it sends back in the data portion. So it made it very easy to be able to do this. So I was able to find um, DSL, you know, hooked up to a corporate network. You know, somebody had gotten a DSL line run to their desk. How? I don't know. I wasn't involved in that part. But basically, their default route went out to, you know, SBC. So I'm sitting here spewing packets to the 192 space, and all of a sudden, I'm seeing data coming back from SBC, and, ooh, that's not a good thing. And, of course, my favorite was the networking devices that had odd routes added for no apparent reason. Um, of course, the networking guys denied that it was on purpose or anything like that, but it got changed rather quickly after you find it. Uh, once again, fast, simple, very specific problem to solve. Okay, here's my, uh, another contribution of mine. This is uh, NPC, uh, Nearly Perfect Crypto. And uh, I'm so glad you're sitting right there in front of me. I really am. Uh, what this does is it's mainly meant as an academic tool, okay? Fuck you. <laughs> I, got, I got Mudge up here uh, uh, causing shit for me. It, it's, it really is meant as an academic tool, and I'll tell you why. I mean, there's a lot of people that don't understand how one-time pads work. What this is is an implementation of a one-time pad, 
Okay? And the reason I say it's nearly perfect crypto is because it is perfect, except as, is, but it is as only reliable as uh, Isaac, the uh, uh, pseudo-random uh, number uh, generator that I've got in there. And it is as, uh, only as perfect as your key management, which is actually kind of the bad thing. So if I'm going to send, uh, let's say, uh, goat porn to, uh, to Mudge, uh, because I, I, it wouldn't be, no, it wouldn't be the first time. Then what I would do is I say, hmm, well, this file is, uh, you know, 30 meg in size. So then I need to generate a 30 meg key to make it happen. And then the trick is, is me getting that key to him and then us never, ever using that key ever again for anything, destroying the key after it's, after it's done. I mean, literally, if I put it on a CD and hand it to him, and then we're done with it, we need to destroy the key. Perhaps with that NRM file that I had previously, or we you know, throw the CDs into a vat of acid, or, or however you manage your uh, paranoia with your CDs at home, however that happens. Anyway, because you're doing something with just like a one-time pad, it makes the crypto part really, it's not very complicated, okay? You're just doing a simple XOR. So it is very fast, very simple. It just it's, it's really nice to do. Like I said, if you can manage the key exchange, you're getting damn close to having pretty good crypto. Anyway, so let's uh, just to show you why this thing is so fast and secure. Here's a uh, uh, the, uh, the 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 main, and I have it in quotes there, crypto loop because it's hardly a loop. And if you look look right down here toward the bottom. Oh my God! Uh, I know why he showed up. Uh, you'll know in a minute. Uh, where it says "wicked crypto" because we are XORing, okay? And you can see that massively intense one line of code there that just kicks so much ass. All right. So anyway, we have this tool there to kind of play with this. And I, I'll tell you the truth. The main reason, actually, truthfully, the main reason I wrote this tool is because there's a friend of mine. Uh, who we would like to really, really have some deep, serious conversations with. And we were talking about, well, how in the world could we actually do this in a secure fashion? Uh, well, okay, we have a smart ass up front who thinks he knows something. But nonetheless, we just kind of went over various scenarios and everything. And so I've come up with this thing. By the way, this and all the tools, we're going to have a spot out there on the, on the uh, uh, NMRC website. Uh, we'll put something up on the on the front page. Hopefully, I'll get it done tonight, and we'll have pointers to all the tools, all the presentations. Please, all questions at the end, please. All right. And oh well, see now it's at time for Q and A. Now this is the thing we're going to do for the Q and A because this is kind of a dry kind of tool talk. All right. So what we're going to do something different from the Q and A is during the Q and A portion of this. We're going to go ahead and spank audience members who uh, want to be spanked. Now, the, the thing that we're going to do is the first thing is, uh, if you're coming up here, we're going to, I mean, obviously, uh, there's no female members, although I think we've got, we may be able to recruit some uh, females that we happen to know to come up here to help spank. Get, get your wife. Come on. Lily, come on up. So you're going to have a choice of, uh, you know, not only being spanked by a guy, but you can be spanked by a chick. Okay, now the thing is, if you want to be spanked, we do have a release form you do have to sign. Uh, if anyone has been reading on uh, Full Disclosure, uh, we did post uh, a link to the release form. So if you filled out one previously that you printed off and filled out, feel free to go ahead and bring it up. Uh, let me get out the stuff that you're going to be spanked with. Hold on just a second. All right, the first thing that we're going to spank people with is a, uh, a, a ShmooCon. This is from the Shmoo group. When I was at ShmooCon, all the speakers got these because they handed out Shmoo balls to throw at speakers that weren't behaving well. 
or being stupid or, or causing shit. So they gave this speaker something to fight back with. So we have a, uh, uh, a schmoo group paddle that you can be spanked with. Uh, you can also uh, be spanked uh, via uh, a nice firm hand. Okay? And the final thing to be spanked with is a copy of the uh, third edition of uh, Hacking Exposed. So, And just to show how it's going to work, I want to bring Mudge up here and spank him. Let's get Mudge up here. You guys should have seen the rehearsals. Uh, I would have to look at the code specifically. I stole some code. No, I stole some code from Todd McDermott because we worked on entropy stuff. Uh, part of it is uh, we're using uh, uh, processor timing speeds and we're throwing in some, um, I forget the exact call. It's one where you're saying slow down. I, I'm, I'm relinquishing the processor and so I get a random time. And so that gives me, between that and some other stuff thrown in, you know, like, you know, the times and stuff. Okay, there you go. Okay, thank you. Um, anyone else? Anyone else want to uh, comments instead of questions? Yeah, go ahead. You got a comment? Two comments, go ahead. All right. Are you 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 want to get spanked while you're where you're getting your comments? No. <laughs> Go ahead. Who do you want? Who do you want to spank you? Sign the release form. <laughs> he signed it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Notice he didn't read it first. <laughs> Give, give him a mic. If it works. Are any of these on? <laughs> I know, we're asking for a lot here. Right, this one. Here, come over here, dude. Okay, so my first comment is your single packet authentication thing. Right. Talk about using it, you know, behind a NAT so that you could, you know, open up a service and so forth. Aren't you opening, I mean, it, you're opening up that service for everything behind that NAT and everyone behind that NAT. Isn't right. that kind of insecure? Yes. Using okay. the internet is known to be insecure. Okay. Yes, of course okay. it's insecure. My, my, my That's second, be, and, okay, yeah, just to, to comment on that. Exercise? Yeah. Yes. Uh, no, what, what this, uh, what, really what this is, is like it's not considered true authentication on there. All you're doing is you're opening up the port. Obviously, uh, you'd be opening up the port and then some other process so, uh, so, would so, handle so, the authentication. So the tool's misnamed. Okay. Uh, the, 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 <laughs> no, the, we are authenticating. Yeah, no, you actually, you are authenticating. You're saying, you, I am who I say I am if you trust uh, PGP. Okay? 
And then if you trust PGP and it says, okay, yeah, I've signed that key, then yes, I know who you are, so I will at least open up the port. Now you've got to go ahead and provide credentials to get access to the box. So right, it's considered a, considered a layer. Okay, so, so, so the second comment is your tool where you use spoofed ICMP in order to try to map network topology. Right. The fact that your client has not implemented anti-spoofing measures on his network all the way down to layer two, the fact that the tool even allow, is allowed to work on the network means that you need to recommend to your client that he implement the anti-spoofing technology so that your tool won't work because it's best practice not to allow spoof tra traffic to, to uh, traverse your network or egress from it. You're assuming this is for business. <laughs> I think it's for any kind of IP. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, is it perfect? No. Is anything perfect? Don't forget, you come up here spanking. Um, which, which did you want? Uh... <laughs> All right, here, next question. Next question. We got to keep things moving. <laughs> Come on, there's got to be more questions than this, and there's got to be more people that just want. All right, who just wants to be spanked? Anyone? Come on up. Come on up. We're not shy. Who wants to? I see people. They're like, like looking and thinking about it. Come on, let's get some. I'm serious. I'm looking at people. Oh my God, we got people coming up. Oh no, they're there. Really, really. Yeah, 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 come on, all right. All right, sign a release form, sign a release form and get your ass spanked. Yeah, Drew, you got to spank the green here, read it. He's going to read it first. There's check boxes on there, oh, like to, to who you want to be. Uh... Yeah, like I would like to be spanked by, check all that apply. Yeah. Oh, we need a beer up here, too. If someone can bring uh, Helen back a beer. Yes, he hasn't had uh, anything to drink in three minutes. Please. Um, also, if you uh, the names that you want to be called during the spanking, such as you can check all that apply, like Biatch, uh, Script Kitty, Scene Whore, Russ Cooper, uh, uh, a number of different ones. Oh, there, there we got a beer. We got a beer for you. <laughs> Any any other uh, any other questions while we're while we're at it while we're getting some people ready to be spanked? Uh, th this guy's already uh, signed. Who do you want to spank you? Uh, all right, there we go. All right, I, who you want to have spank you? You me? <laughs> what instrument? <laughs> ah, USAP. All right, anyone else got any? Uh... Uh, uh, let's, I want to bring uh, Jay Random over here. He talked about uh, why the hackback hadn't been updated in, uh, in ages. Uh, basically, it's all your fault. <laughs> uh, so I think we were here maybe two years ago. Was that the left panel? Yeah, yeah so two years ago, uh, I spent maybe a good few months taking the hack back as uh, Nomad had left it, uh, updating the HTML so it was all valid, updating all the URLs so they weren't broken, updating a good amount of the content so that uh, it was relevant to today, you know, stuff that had been documented back then uh, but wasn't known uh, at the time. Um, and so we basically came to people and said, we've redone everything. All we need is your input. We need more questions, more frequently asked questions. Uh, 
that we can get documented in the fact so uh, we can improve the general knowledge in the community. And um, we just got spam. That, that's all we got. Penis enlargements, uh, credit card bills. Uh, so, yeah, um, the fact's pretty much dead. Uh, we're going to keep it online, um, but clearly no one's really interested in uh, adding to it. And so we'll just keep it as a kind of historical record, I guess. All right, I think we're right at back toward the end of the presentation. I wanted to go ahead and actually finish up with a couple of uh, uh, specific announcements. Uh, the girl in the picture, yes, she is wearing an NMRC t-shirt. And uh, yes, I have the world's most understanding wife because I actually paid for the model and paid for the photo session to get these pictures in particular just for uh, DEF CON. And we will make sure that some of the artwork is available on the NMRC website so that uh, you can use it for uh, uh, backgrounds on your computers. And uh, got a few shout outs in there. Uh, uh, CAU, they're represented over here. Some, there's some green guy that if you see the green guy, then you know that uh, CAU, they've been very supportive uh, for us. Uh, obviously all the DC214 people because a lot of the talks and stuff that we give, we try them out on our local uh, DC groups thing. Uh, also, uh, Mad Hat's going to be participating in the uh, DC uh, uh, the DC Group's panel that's on later this evening. Uh, John Callis, I saw him at Black Hat. Uh, he, his, he had some ideas for spa that actually were pretty good that we had put in there, and shout out to him. Of course, the rest of the MRC people that aren't here. Uh, Mike Rash, who is uh, somewhere out here in the audience. There he is, right there. Uh, uh, FW Knopp, which actually was uh, up here last year. Actually, it's very similar, and we've been talking. It's very similar to Spa, so we've been talking with him and everything. And I've got, I just want you guys to know that uh, we're trying, we're going to be actually, our first planning session for uh, DEF CON 14 is going to take place later tonight. Uh, and we promise that we're going to have something, uh, we're going to try to have something really big and fantastic for you guys. Uh, we really appreciate uh, all the support that you guys have given us. Uh, over this uh, uh, wondrous time that we've been having. So, you know, really do appreciate all the support from everyone. We'll try to do our best to uh, uh, give back as much as we can uh, to everyone here. So, if we have nothing else, uh, just want to say thanks. So, oh, oh, we have something over here. Yes. The rumor is, is what now? Yeah, there are, yes, of course there are rumors that it's not going to be uh, here at Alexis Park next year. Um, I don't know, because there was those same rumors last year as well. Uh, as I, I know there's rumors floating around at ShmooCon, for example, that uh, it might not be here this year, but it, in fact it was. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, uh, I, I, you know, I, as much as I can, I try to slide my tongue down the back of... Uh, uh, Jeff Moss's trousers, but he really doesn't tell me much in the, as an exchange for uh, kissing his ass. So, so I don't know. Take that up with Jeff, actually. Yeah, another question. Okay, suggestions for the hack pack. We'll take. We'll 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 get on that right away. Okay. <laughs> No, and again, all the code and stuff that we're talking about, we will have links up to that stuff. I'll make sure that stuff gets put up tonight. And uh, so you can uh, pull it down, play with it, break it. Uh, uh, a number of us have been writing code. We don't profess to be coders, okay? So if you come up with uh, fix, in fact, like, for example, Spa had a, uh, a remotely exploitable heap overflow in it until I uh, found that and corrected it, okay? But uh, so anything you guys can do to help add to the... Add to it, and, and and if you come up with some better idea than what we've got, then then e that's even better because then that means you know we've inspired someone to come up with something that's actually been coded by real coders instead of just hacker types. Okay. Do what? Oh yeah, and if you uh, find any uh, zero days in any of the code that we release, we recommend that you go ahead and turn it into I defense because they need the help. Okay, they really do. All right, so uh, that's it. We will see you guys next year and at cons uh, in between. So.
Thanks a lot.